And first this morning is our mayor, is our mayor Mike Houston. The mayor will give an update on the rail improvement project, which your Q5 has stood behind when it first got started and stands ready to do whatever's necessary as that particular idea moves forward. I've stayed close to this project over the last couple of years, and I, I, and I can't don't even know half of the effort that the mayor has put in on our behalf on the behalf of our community in making this project move forward all of us so uh, the mayor chairman van meter senator durbin and all of our uh, illinois congressional delegation a real debt of gratitude uh, for their successful efforts uh, getting us to this point in what is arguably one of the most significant projects in the city of springfield so without further delay mayor mike houston Good morning. Good morning. Well, when I walked in this morning, I saw those blue signs sitting out front. And that's the first time that I've, I've seen one of, one of those signs. But they're sort of, sort of neat. And more importantly, they send a message. And one of the nice things is the, uh, the chamber and the operating engineers were really behind getting those put together. And I think that it sends a, a message in terms of, of the community in terms of, of talking about the fact that we said we were going to increase our sales tax by a half percent, and that that money was going to be spent on streets and sidewalks. So that over the next couple of years, as you see those signs out and about in the community, you can think about the fact that, yes, we increased our sales tax by a half percent, but you're seeing what you're getting for that, that half percent. For too long, the city of Springfield had not invested in its infrastructure. And the nice thing about the fact that we've increased the sales tax by a half percent is that we are going to go out with a bonding of approximately $87 million. And under that bonding, the only way that that money can be spent is for the projects that we have identified. It can't be diverted to something else. And just as we talked in terms of increasing our sewer fee by 5% a year in each of the next 10 years, all those dollars can only be spent on sewers. Again, to deal with a problem that this community has had for a very, very long period of time. I don't know how many of you read the Wall Street Journal, but if you looked on the front page of the Wall Street Journal yesterday, they had an, an article that was on the far right-hand side, and the title of it was Cities Grapple with Funding. And that's the first of a five-part series that they are, are doing. Today, they featured Allentown, Pennsylvania. Tomorrow, they're featuring Springfield, Illinois. So pick up the, the paper. I have no idea what the, what the article will be like. I, they don't, don't give you copies of the articles beforehand. But they took a look at the 250 largest cities in the country and tried to identify some cities that are doing things right. So I think that that says something in terms of what we are doing here in this community to talk about the future of the city of Springfield. You know, at your, your places, you have a, a map. And on one side, the map shows the existing conditions of our railroad tracks through the city of Springfield. If you flip to the other side, what you have is what is proposed with our 10th Street rail corridor. There's an old saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. Take a look at the two sides again. And if there was ever a picture that was worth a thousand words, that is the difference in terms of looking at the number of crossings that we have today compared to what we can do if we were able to go ahead and get the funding and to really change the complexity of our, our community. I appreciate the Chamber in Q5 giving me the opportunity to discuss what I feel is the most important issue facing our community due to its impact on the future of Springfield. 
The future of Springfield is literally riding on rail in an upgraded transportation infrastructure. The idea of consolidating our railroad tracks in Springfield is not a new idea. There was a time when communities fought to have railroads coming right through the center of town. And apparently Springfield was very successful at one point in history. You know, it wasn't that, that long ago that we had many more railroad tracks running through the city of Springfield than what we have today. Think about Madison Street. It was a few years ago that railroad tracks ran down the middle of Madison Street. Think about Madison Street today. Go out by MacArthur and Wabash. It hasn't been that many years ago that the railroad tracks ran just immediately south of MacArthur, or excuse me, a Wabash, going west. And I want you to think about the development that has taken place from Stanford and MacArthur going south out to 72. It's called economic development. None of that would have happened had those railroad tracks remained there. You know, you can go back to a city plan in the 1920s, and it talked about consolidating the railroad tracks here in the city of Springfield. In the 1970s and 1980s, we had something called the Capital City Railroad Relocation Authority. It was a demonstration project that the federal government funded in three cities across the country. And the idea was that we would take our three sets of tracks and we would consolidate them to a single track and they would see what would happen to the community. But there was a problem. The problem was that the community could not come together and speak with one voice as to where those tracks should go. So in 2013, we have the 3rd Street tracks, we have the 10th Street tracks, and we have the 19th Street tracks, all within 16 blocks of each other. Today we have the opportunity to move the 3rd Street railroad tracks over to the 10th Street rail quarter and improve the situation along the 19th Street tracks. Now note, I use the word opportunity. Because opportunity is exactly what it is. Many people believe that because we have received a record of decision from the Federal Railroad Administration that this is a done deal, that this is something that is just going to happen. It will only happen if we are able to put together the funding necessary to make this project happen. Today, that funding does not exist. Now, if you think about this for a second, if we're able to take our 3rd Street tracks and move them over to 10th Street, number one, we provide the safest corridor for rail traffic to move through the city of Springfield. We also provide for the best vehicular and pedestrian ability to move on an east-west basis through the city of Springfield. And thirdly, in the future, there would never be another train whistle in the city of Springfield. Think about those three things for a second. Number one, you got the safest route. Number two, it provides for the best vehicular and pedestrian movement on an east-west basis. And number three, you eliminate all train whistles within the city of Springfield. Part of that project involves the construction of a new intermodal station that would not only improve our train and bus passenger safety and comfort, but it would also provide an important development opportunity for the eastern portion of our central business district. There will be no part of Springfield 
Sangamon County or this entire region that will not benefit from this. The benefits from doing this literally are immeasurable. Today there are 33 trains that pass through the city of Springfield on those three sets of tracks. By the year 2030, the estimate is there will be 81 trains a day passing through the city of Springfield. Most of those trains are not going to be Amtrak trains. They are going to be freight trains. And those freight trains are carrying much heavier train cars, and they will be much longer than what we have been used to seeing. In fact, if you sort of watch the freight trains going through the city of Springfield, which I do fairly closely, what you've noticed is they're sort of changing. The freight trains that we're starting to see are coming from the intermodal station up in Joliet. Or they're going to the intermodal station up in Joliet. And what they're carrying on those freight cars are basically loads that can be carried by trucks. The only difference is they stack two of them, one on top of the other. Those trains also happen to be much longer. The trains of the future will be two miles long or longer. Two miles long or longer. From the north to the south by rail, it is five miles. Now think about a train that is two miles long or longer. And then I want you to conceptualize something. Think about a train that is coming from the south north. And then I want you to think about another train coming from the north south. And they're passing each other as they go through the city of Springfield. Then think about yourself sitting at a railroad crossing trying to move from east to west through the city of Springfield. Imagine that for a thing, second. That is not a pretty thought. These are some of the reasons why the 10th Street Corridor is so important to the future of the city of Springfield. Now let me take a moment and do a quick review of sort of how we got to the point where we're at today. You know, in 2009, it was announced that high-speed rail was going to use the 3rd Street tracks through the city of Springfield. There was no discussion. It was simply announced that that was what was going to happen. At that time, I happened to be the chairman of the board of the Greater Springfield Chamber of Commerce. And the chamber took the lead in opposing high-speed rail going down the 3rd Street tracks. Fortunately for our community, it came together and it did speak with one voice in terms of the opposition to using the 3rd Street track for high-speed rail. It would have had a devastating impact in terms of our downtown, but it would have been devastating for our entire community. We've come a long way since then. Senator Durbin and his staff have worked very hard to convince the Federal Railroad Administration that the 10th Street track, that quarter, is the best way for high-speed rail to move through our community. Our entire federal and state delegations from this area have been very, very supportive, as has Governor Quinn. We've developed a very good working relationship with Union Pacific Railroad, and all the pieces are in place to make this happen. The estimated cost to do this is $315 million in 2010 dollars. The project will take from start to finish eight years. It is doable, but it will not be easy given the size of the project that we are dealing with. It will only happen if the city, the county, and the state can work with our federal officials to come up with federal funding to help make this happen. Thanks to Governor Quinn and IDOT Secretary Ann Schneider, we have 
an $8.65 million grant from IDOT to begin the planning and design work for the 10th Street Corridor. That project is estimated to cost $18.3 million to do the design work for the quarter. So that's about 50% of doing that. The most important thing is that by moving forward with the planning and design, we are putting ourselves in a position that we will be shovel ready when federal dollars become available. The city has entered into a contract with Hanson Professional Services to do the design of the 10th Street Quarter. Hanson, in turn, is subcontracting out a lot of that work to local engineering firms so that it gets spread out within the community. One of the things we hope to do is to keep as much of that work and as many of those dollars right here in the city of Springfield because that can have a tremendous economic impact on our community in its future. Since there is no place where we can tap $315 million today, what our approach is, is to use what we refer to as usable segments. The city and the county recently was awarded the United States Department of Transportation Tiger Grant, and we had the support of the Illinois Department of Transportation in our application. The Tiger Grant is for $14.4 million towards a $21.8 million project that would be a usable segment along the 10th Street corridor. What we are going to do is on Carpenter Street, we're going to build an underpass that will improve our safety by closing three at-grade crossings and improve the emergency health care service for thousands of residents who need to cross from east to west on Carpenter Street to obtain emergency medical assistance at St. John's Hospital and Memorial Medical Center. We expect to get the remaining $7.4 million from the Illinois Commerce Commission as a result of closing those at-grade crossings. Tiger grants are very, very competitive. Nationwide, in this round, there was $475 million that was available. There were over $9 billion of applications. The United States Department of Transportation awarded 52 grants that went into 37 states. This is the only Tiger grant that was awarded in the state of Illinois. It also is the second largest grant that was given for rail. It is our intention to continue to apply for funds to do usable segments as they are the only federal dollars available for the project at this time. There's also been a lot of discussion at the state level of putting together a capital bill. And that discussion has been taking place for some time. The basic holdup is the major holdup, and that is how do you pay for it? And while everybody agrees that it would be nice to have a capital bill, no one wants to talk in terms of how you're going to be able to, to make the payments to do that. Well, that's a, a major hurdle that will need to be overcome. I fully expect that at some point there will be a capital bill that is passed by the state legislature and signed into law by the governor. And it's really important that when that happens, and I fully expect that it will not only happen, but it will also include money for our project. While we've started the planning and design work and we're pursuing federal funding through usable segments, the Springfield Mass Transit District is moving forward with their plans to build a new facility that will, in fact, be part of an overall intermodal station that will involve not only our local bus service and our trains, but also provide for interstate uh, buses as well as, as cab service. That building will complement the new train station and be built to replace the existing train station on the 3rd Street Railroad tracks. They're actually in the process of purchasing property right now to do that. That plan is to have that multimodal facility located between Washington and Adams on the north and south, and 9th and 11th on the west and the east. Now, if anybody has been up to, to normal recently, 
you have some idea what impact the new train station has had on downtown normal. There's been over $200 million of development in downtown normal as a result of that train station. And if you look across the country where new train stations have been built, that is exactly the same type of thing that is happening all across the country. And we would fully expect that that would be the same type of thing that we would see here in Springfield with a new intermodal station that really uh, will, will have a major impact in terms of East Springfield. I also want you to keep in mind that as we talk about that particular location, we have two major employers right in that area, St. John's Hospital and Horseman Educators. Both are organizations that are growing, that are expanding, and this can be a catalyst to help them do what they are doing and really be a shot in the arm for our community. As I said earlier, we have an opportunity to, to do something that will have a major impact on the long-term future of Springfield. It's important that we take full advantage of that opportunity. It is not something that is going to happen overnight, and it is not something that is going to be easy to do. The $315 million price tag in 2010 dollars is a hurdle that we have to overcome at a time when there is very little federal funding that's available. But if we begin to break down that $315 million, it doesn't seem quite as big. As I indicated, we have the IDOT grant in terms of a planning, which is $18.65 million. We have the Tiger grant that is approximately $14.4 million. We expect that we will have the $7.4 million from the Illinois Commerce Commission due to the closings. If you add those numbers up, that's about $30.5 million, or we are about 10% along the way to getting this done. Now, if you've looked at the studies, one of the things that has been contained in each study is that the city will contribute $34 million to this overall project. Add the $34 million on, and suddenly we're at $65 million. So suddenly we're at more than 20% of the project, which becomes a much more doable project than just thinking about that $315 million number. I anticipate that the city will be using a Federal Railroad Administration program to borrow our $34 million, which we can do and pay back over a 35-year period. And if we were to do that today, the interest rate would be in the range of 25 to 3%. As I said earlier, the city has an opportunity to get this done. Back in 2009, Q5 and the Strategic Leadership Council provided a source of dollars that we were able to fight high-speed rail. Because the city didn't have money, the county didn't have money, but there was a pot of money available as a result of Q5 and the SLC. Without Q5 and the SLC, we would not be where we are today in terms of this project. Your investment in Q5 has paid off big time for the city of Springfield, and more importantly, big time for the future of the city of Springfield. As I said earlier, we've come a very, very long way since we started in 2009. The city highly appreciates its ongoing relationship with our partners in terms of moving forward with the railroad consolidation. But it's not just the railroad consolidation that we want to work with our partners. It really is a matter that we want to make the city of Springfield a model of resiliency in terms of moving our community forward and having a bright economic future. I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody have, and thank you for the opportunity to, to join you this morning.